We all agree technique is an important element in music, but one of the issues with most guitar players is that they don't really see the bigger picture. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about some ideas and elements as well as crucial exercises to actually boost your technique and get really, really strong. All right, so the first thing is I want us to understand the importance of not just playing scales like this. There's nothing wrong with playing scales, there's nothing wrong with playing fast, like all this stuff is great. The question is, what do we do with information? It's very important to practice technique, but practice it with intention and with a truthful meaning to it. Now, there's nothing wrong with being strong and, and being able to articulate things fast, but I think it's important to have clear application for these things. So, okay, we're gonna dive in right now. I'm gonna talk about a few general points and then I'm going to show you the technique and some of the framework that I'm talking about and these are ways, these are concepts that you can apply not to the, only the scale that I'll show you but also to other scales and framework. Let's dive in. Oh, before we dive in, please click the like button and subscribe. Thank you. The first thing I want to encourage us all is to do this like balance practice so even if you're trying to shred and you're working on some shapes and I don't know you're working on this like you know whatever shape that you like it's cool there's no problem but just try and listen to it try to sing it try to say oh how does it sound against this chord how does it make me feel and what is the meaning of it and also try to play it in different contexts. It doesn't need to be only just like, oh, I can have this song in C major and this is all I can do. No, let's try to find actual ways to apply the information. So I know it's kind of general, but it's really important to actually bring these exercises and these cells of information that you're probably practicing into reality. And this is a part of the practice. All right, I'm going to be very honest. We have to be honest with ourselves. So what I mean by that is when you're practicing, whether it's a scale, whether it's an exercise, you know if it's happening or not. So take your time and don't just kind of do it approximated. Again, I'm telling myself this because I used to do it all the time and that's not cool. Like there's no reason to approximate. Let's get it, let's nail it and then move on. But we need to really spend the time slowly and carefully in order to nail it. Okay, let's do it. Be very honest. Be very clear with yourself about what it is that you're trying to practice. Don't say, I want to practice scales. Scales are a huge topic. It's sort of like saying like, ah, I want to drive. Okay, where, what, when, why? So let's be very clear. For example, I'll be saying, I want to practice F minor pentatonic. Not bad. Where? Okay, here, I want to practice this position of F minor pentatonic. Great. What are the notes, right? So I'm going to be very specific and I'm going to ask myself very specific questions. Do I understand it? What is the sound? Can I play it in time? And now start the practice. So check this out. If you're filling out this video and like to support, please smash the like button and maybe even check out the Patreon. Thank you. All right, so this information applies for other colors as well, other sounds, other scales. But for example, what is the sound of F minor pentatonic? Assuming that this is my choice of practice. First, I'm trying to understand what is the color, how it feels, how it sounds before I'm gonna try and shred it. Okay, so, okay, so this is the sound, this is F. And I'm also thinking about the notes, it's not just shapes, right? Just singing F. Wow, you know, before I, I am shredding and trying to play all these things, I'm trying to just feel the scale, it's amazing, so beautiful. Okay, so we have F, we have A flat, we have B flat, we have C, we have E flat, and again F. This is the pentatonic, five notes penta, right? So this is these sounds, and if I understand these sounds, that color is gonna be repeated all across the board, right? Because if I'm playing just this familiar pentatonic shape, right? It's basically that sound repeated. F, A flat, B flat, C, E flat, F. 
right? So F, A flat, B flat, C, E flat, F. Just copy paste it again and again. So this is the sound. So if we start recognizing these five notes, we're actually already in a way better position. Now I'm saying it, and you probably know a lot of this stuff, but if you're gonna embrace this mindset of listening, this mindset of listening and trying to figure and trying to tag the information wherever you go, oh, what is this? Oh, this is C. Oh, this is B flat, A flat, F. This will help a lot. So. It's a simple thing, but it's huge intention and a huge um, kind of pusher in a positive way in toward uh, knowing the information. Before I'm gonna shred and do all the technical stuff that we'll do in a second, I'm just gonna make sure I can sing it. Right, it's sort of like, just feeling the colors of the sound that we're dealing with. So again, you're trying to... But what are these notes, right? It's exactly those colors that we're dealing with. So understanding that, seeing it in a truthful, slow way will actually excel the process of learning anything. Okay, so now the mapping begins. Instead of saying, I need to know the pentatonic in every position, in every possible key, everywhere. No, I'm saying, let's limit ourselves and know something really well. Let's say one position, just here. Okay, this is doable, right? So just let's, let's just do this. And I know you probably know this fingering, this is why I'm choosing it, but we're gonna make it harder in a second. So this is this position, okay, cool. So this is F minor, and when I'm playing this, I want also to be aware of the notes. And I want to kind of feel the sounds. I want to feel the tension and release, the rise and the fall of this musical phrase. Even if it's just a scale, right? It's still beautiful. It still contains all the truth of music. So now the next step after that is playing it in time in a very clear way. And this is the place that most people fall right away. If I'm asking somebody to play chord notes, eight notes, triple and sixteen in a few tempos, oftentimes it's not happening. Even if they have some experience, and that's very surprising because the subdivision is one of the most important things. Again, our relationship to the beat and how we can feel beat, bit, beat, beat. Okay, um, and how we can feel the pulse against certain progression, a certain scale is extremely important, and this is very useful when we actually solo and especially if you want to shred later on. Any pause, any metronome will do it. Filling the pause and trying to play it in time. Simple. Quarters, maybe now eight notes. One and two and three. Now I need this to be also easy, so I don't need to think too much. Triplets. You can focus, but try to be light. 16. Now, in certain tempos, it might be easy. And it's very important if you want to get good at guitar and be able to play and articulate things to make this a priority. The time and the relationship to the beat is crucial and you need to be able to not think about it. Now, we can always get better at this, right? It's a process. I'm not saying everything is always perfect, but the idea of hearing the core notes, eight notes, triple and 16 is very, very important. And also be, being able to switch between them at twill. Because when we're soloing at the end of the day, we're just gonna switch between them. And you don't wanna be like, okay, one, two, three, you don't wanna count. So what I would suggest is as a starting point, really nailing the subdivision. Don't forget that this process is valid for any one of these positions. So I literally would do it here and then I'll do it here, right? I'll literally move this idea here and say, okay, now again, mapping the colors, mapping the notes, listening, singing, doing chord notes, eight notes, triple sixteen, and then maybe connecting the two positions again here and kind of moving across the board slowly but surely. I'm gonna stick with this position still because I wanna talk about a few more ideas. Going back to the true 
color of things. Again, whether it's pentatonic, major, diminished, whatever it is, playing the scale on one uh, on one string is extremely helpful. And I'm trying to think about notes more than anything else. Um, again, you can totally think of fingering if you want as well, but I think it's it's easier in a way to think notes or just imagine the color and find it. And what I would do is like literally play the scale on each one of the strings. I know it sounds um, very basic in a way, but it's a great exercise because it helps us connect to the true sound and color of music and the scale that you're working on. And it's not just position. And it kind of forces you to listen and to look for what you're doing, uh, which I think is great because the searching quality in any technique is important. We don't want to just just move fingers with no thinking. Again, I'm into technique, but the technique needs to be truthful as much as possible. Again, being aware and trying to cultivate that idea. I like the idea of freedom, and one of the things that I like in terms of sound is legato. So I sometimes would take this position and play it legato. So basically, hammer on and pull off. Once I feel a little more comfortable, I might change the tempo, bring it up a little bit and or play another subdivision. And I'll also try and do that on each one of the positions. So if I'm working on legato and I'm trying to get a little more uh, fluid with, with the motion of a scale, a pentatonic major, whatever it is, I'll literally do it in every one of the positions so it's clear. And sometimes I'll do like little permutations with legato or without it. So for example. <laughs> And you can keep going. Um, again, with the idea of permutation, it's basically finding some variations of the scale and, you know, that's a simple one or, or you can find anything that you like. Also cool three and two. The point is not really playing what I played or what somebody else played, which is also fine, but it's like trying to find ideas that you dig and care about. So if you, for example, like this idea. And you want to work on that. So great, now take this idea and maybe move it around. So. The point of the technique for me and the practice is again finding pockets of information that I actually dig and care about and I try to find variation permutations and try to make them happen. And again, systematically, I'll try to do it uh, in a clear tempo, I'll try to do it in an area, I'll try to mix it and of course I will try to also utilize it with music. So, you know, I'll just try to basically find outlets to the ideas and sounds that I'm exploring. It doesn't mean that at the gig I'm always trying to pull that out. It's not really what I'm doing, but when I'm practicing information, I'm trying to imagine it on stuff. So I'll take a simple chord progression, one chord, a vamp, a blues or something, and say like, oh, I just worked on this idea. Let me try if I hear this. Just anything you're working on that you wanna try and explore is valid, but just trying to balance this idea between the framework, the technique, the pentatonic, whatever it is, and the music. I would try and keep the solo where I am, where I'm, where I'm playing, and I, I will make sure I can use those ideas in different places. Now, it sounds simple and easy, but actually when you come to think about it, oftentimes people kind of know these disjointed elements and then they jump all around to get to this idea that they worked on. So it's not that cool and not very natural. So it's nicer and uh, maybe a little more work to try and be able to control it 
in the way that you can pull it up in parts. You don't need to utilize the whole phrase. It's like you memorize this beautiful poetry by Shakespeare, but you don't always have to say the whole full monologue. You can just use some expressions or ideas or images from that um, you know, beautiful art. So the same thing in music, I think. We need to try and look at these ideas and elements as clear as possible and to dive into them so we can utilize them in creation. Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful and, and in a way contributing to your process. Thank you and I'll see you soon. Peace out.